Hey guys, we're talking Power Rangers again, and today we are looking at the fifth video in a series of videos where I'm doing a review on the Altea Megazord. So I'm gonna link the very first one for you right over here, and otherwise we're gonna be taking a look at the articulation, the design, and how well this compares to the other ones. So stick around, and we're gonna get right into it. The Tyrannosaurus Rex, and from here on, I'm gonna call it T-Rex for short, just because Tyrannosaurus is a bit long and here it is in all of its glory and so like with the others here is our power rangers lightning collection remastered red ranger so you can see just how big this t-rex is uh, next to the red ranger now obviously not to scale but this is the biggest one that uh, is possible to get at this point so it's you know something that some people might want to pose together so this is awesome to see i really like this a lot and now just like with our previous zords we're going to be taking a look at how this looks compared to the official materials that we have first up is our front facing image and you can see that there are a lot of the same things but there are definitely some differences too first off being that the hands can't really articulate so you can see in the image how they're more like kind of like that rather than just kind of straight like that i think our uh, our chest area is actually a lot more scrunched in on the official image. I also feel like with our knees, we should be seeing a bit more red over here. And maybe that's in part because of the angle of what you're seeing here versus what you're seeing on the image. But otherwise, I think a lot of the difference is gonna be like with the abdomen area and how it just, it just looks really different. It, it's hard to really kind of pinpoint because it's a lot of kind of different parts there. Now looking at it from the side perspective, you can actually see that there's a lot of it that actually looks very, very close to being the same. Now, uh, one of the big differences though is that the neck is much thicker here than what we see in the official image. Um, but that's for pretty obvious reasons. As you know, the Megazord head is actually in there. So that makes sense. You can see that the thigh on the official image actually is uh, thicker and also shorter. So that's interesting too. Uh, at least the tail looks pretty spot on. So uh, we're seeing one, two, three, four, five, six pieces to the tail. And again, you can kind of see that like the abdomen kind of stomach area actually looks a little bit thicker on the uh, official one than what we're seeing here. Almost as if he's got a bit of a gut, which is kind of funny to think about. Other than that, maybe getting a little bit more black detail around here to match a little bit more would make this a lot better. But this still looks really great as it is. Now, obviously, we have a connection piece right here that we're not seeing in the official one, but there's only so much you can do. And finally, back from the back side, uh, one of the things that's pretty clear uh, is that this right here should not be just totally black. It does appear to be more uh, silver and then the back of the thighs or maybe the butt depending on uh, what you want to call it um, there should be a piece there and a piece there as well and they should be red but instead we're seeing kind of the exposed parts we're also seeing uh, that this part up here should be uh, silver just the way that this is too and uh, this part right here has a break in the middle but then over in the official image it does not so that part is all silver right there too other than that, it's still looking pretty good. So I'm very happy with this overall. And just like with the others, here are the other T-Rex dinosaurs. So from our left, we have the original release here. And then we have the Bandai Legacy. We have the Soul of Chogokin. We have our Cheap Hasbro, our Zap Hasbro, our Mini Plot, and then of course the Altea T-Rex. Now like with the Sabertooth Tiger and the Triceratops, our original one actually has uh, some different kind of features than what we have on everything else. And the main thing uh, is that it's got a trigger or a button to release the leg uh, for the transformation. Other than that, um, most of the design cues are pretty much there uh, being done by stickers over here. Not a huge deal, especially at the time. What's interesting about the uh, legacy one is just how tiny the arms really are. So. That's really interesting, but I mean, you can see they're almost non-existent, right? Like they're really just there to transform and then that's it. But even once you put them down, they're just so tiny. Like that's really kind of the joke of the T-Rex arms, right? The cheaper Hasbro is really cheap, especially in the tail section. You can really just see how much they skimped on that. The front part is okay, but it's just missing so many paint apps and, and or stickers that it's very, very obvious that this is really just intended to be just thrown around and beat up. Uh, and so these are definitely very cheap. Now, the Zap one is actually pretty interesting because there's actually more articulation here than uh, you would expect. So the legs can actually spread out a pretty good amount, which is cool because it's both for the T-Rex as well as for the Megazord when it's in Megazord mode. However, the arms actually have like 
almost no articulation and it's weird because they're kind of stuck at this 45 degree angle. The other thing I don't really like about the Zap is that like, the eyes are kind of goofy. It's got that weird kind of like digital design that they're doing all over them, which I do like in some ways, but on the eye for the T-Rex, I don't like that so much. Although what is interesting though, is that they actually are using the same design for uh, attaching the legs to the Sabertooth Tiger and the Triceratops for Megazord mode. So I suspect they kind of just stole that from the Soul of Trigokin, but still an interesting thing to know. Otherwise, our mini plot has a pretty nice amount of articulation for the legs as well, for the same reason that the uh, Zap Hasbro one did. So I also want to do a comparison against the Super 7 T-Rex. And I actually did a review on this. I actually like it a lot. It actually looks pretty close to the official prop. And here you go. Here's a comparison of the two. Uh, this one, uh, again, it does look very close. Like I mentioned earlier, it's got the weird kind of like belly stomach thing, uh, pretty accurate over here uh, and not over here. But at the same time, the Super 7 one doesn't transform. It's got pretty limited articulation as well, uh, but just a, a fun thing to compare. Now, of course, just like the previous ones, our Altea is effectively a blown up version of the Soul of Cho Gokin. So pretty much all of the same features are going to be there, except for a couple of exceptions. Uh, the first one is actually you have more articulation in the arms than we do on the Altea. So as you can see, this one is kind of moving all around, not just uh, going like that, but the fact that you can kind of come out a bit like that and back in. While that's not a lot of articulation, it's still articulation. On our Altea, it is non-existent at all. There, there's no give uh, during the build video. And if you haven't seen my build videos, then you know, I have a whole playlist for those that I'll link it right up here. There's not any play designed to be in there. So these are just flat right against the body the way it is. And that's actually giving a little bit of play, probably because I didn't screw that in enough, but you can see that over here, there's no play at all. And so even though it doesn't have that articulation coming out, we do have our arm articulation. And it is kind of nice because it's not just kind of coming up like that, but as you can see, it also moves that way. Then we've got wrist articulation. We've got the thumb or claw, I'm not sure what you want to call that. Waist swivel. The neck doesn't swivel or move at all, but of course the head definitely does. And the mouth of course also opens. Our tail has a nice level of articulation because again, each of those pieces is its own bit of articulation. We've got articulation right there at the foot. Uh, it doesn't have any uh, side to side articulation and it doesn't really um, have like pivot that way. Um, of course, obviously the knee is going to turn because that will then plug into the saber tooth tiger or the triceratops on either side. As you can see, we do have a thigh and that's of course going to be for the Megazord as well. Other than that, they're uh, pretty much the same except for the head. Now, like the previous uh, Altea Zords, uh, the head does light up and it does so with a button on the back. So as you can hear, I'm clicking it, but just like the others, with the exception of the pterodactyl, you have to press and hold. And as you can see, it just turned on. Now, like with the others, with again, the exception of the pterodactyl, it can cycle from just being on to a rapid blink to off, but you can only do that with the remote. So with the remote, I can use, I believe it's number five to do the rapid blink, six is off and four to turn it back on. Now, this works because of infrared, and so that means that it needs to have an infrared sensor. And on this particular Zord, the infrared sensor is actually in the stomach area. I believe specifically that the infrared sensor is right here in the green. And what's interesting about this one compared to the others is that the power button is actually hidden far more than it is on the other ones. On the other ones, it's very obvious that it's the power button. It's obvious where it is when you see it. It's always next to the uh, charging port as well. However, on the T-Rex, as you can see, here's your micro USB charging port and the button is actually right here. So I don't know how well you can see that. But right here you have, this is just design, but this is an actual button. So the button has been designed as part of the design which is awesome, but let me just do that so you can hear. So you can see that that's actually the button. And I think that's great. I kind of wish they would have done that with more of the uh, Zords, but they had to do it this way because the head doesn't detach, the head stays attached. 
And I'll show this more in the full Megazord review, but because it does have the Megazord head, Megazord head actually also has its own separate LEDs, but I do want to show you the inside of the chest. So like the Soul of Chagokin, the chest can actually contain the cannons that are also used as stands for the pterodactyl Zord. Although these don't really hold in there super well, like I can press them in, but then just a little bit of shaking around and these kind of come loose. So as you can see, here's our little control board. You can see a bunch of wiring. And so when the T-Rex head goes down, uh, we have our Megazord head here. And the thing is that the Megazord head actually is completely separate from the T-Rex head in terms of like the electronics and the battery and everything. So this has its own separate battery, its own separate charger, uh, and its own separate button. So uh, subscribe for the Megazord video because that's going to be coming out soon now that uh, the T-Rex one is wrapping up. And like with our previous weigh-ins, we are weighing the original Dinozord T-Rex first. And this one's coming in at exactly seven ounces. Next up, we are weighing the Soul of Chagokin uh, T-Rex. And this one does have the uh, the cannons inside. And I went ahead and put those back inside the Altea as well, just to keep it uh, the same. And this one comes in at 11.5 ounces. And finally, I'll put the Altea on our scale. And we are getting four pounds, 10.2 ounces. So uh, obviously this is the heaviest Zord that we have. Uh, it's also the biggest Zord that we have. So that's pretty obvious there, but there you go. So as far as die cast location, uh, the main body is plastic, uh, but our head is made of die cast. Uh, the arms are plastic. The hands are made of die cast. Our hip piece here is die cast, but then the actual rest of the hip is plastic tail is definitely plastic uh, but then the legs are mostly die cast with some plastic like the red parts are definitely going to be plastic uh, some of the silver is plastic but again like the the structural parts uh, that really matter are definitely going to be die cast so that's where uh, most of the weight is coming from the other thing i do want to point out is that you might see some scratches on here but that's more specific to megazord mode so i'll go more into that uh, once I do that review. So click here for that review and otherwise you'll see more Power Rangers.